Hey, sports card fans, it's John, Wade Boggs fan. Hope you're all doing well. It's time for another look at the top 10 PSA Vintage Baseball Card Sales on eBay. This time we're looking at January 2023. As always, I break down the top 10 lists of the cards from the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. This month, the 50s and 60s have a lot of the usual suspects show up, but there are a few surprises that pop in for those two decades. For the 1970s, it's always interesting to see which cars make that top 10 list. And for the first time since I've been doing these top 10 videos, every single card in the top 10 is a PSA 10 copy of that card and some of them have a really low population count so let's get right to it all right let's start off with the top 10 from the 1950s at number 10 we have this 1953 tops mickey mantle in a really nice psa 5. this card sold on january 2nd for ten thousand five hundred dollars it was a best offer the current VCP average price for a PSA 5 is $7,833. Obviously, when it, you're looking at vintage cards, sometimes based on the grade, I appeal makes a big difference. This looks like a great PSA 5 copy, which may have led to the buyer uh, and seller agreeing to a price of $10,500, well above the current average price. Number nine, despite the poor picture in the listing, we have this 1955 Tops Roberto Clemente rookie card in a PSA 7. This sold on January 12th. It was a buy it now for $13,000. Not sure why the seller had a buy it now price about $4,000 below the current average price for a PSA 7, but nonetheless sold for $13,000. Again, the image used for this listing may not do the card justice, other than slightly being off-center, looks like a great copy of the Roberto Clemente rookie card. Number eight, we have the 1959 Tops Mickey Mantle in a great 8.5. This card sold on January 30th for $14,777. It was an auction. There were 50 bids and ended up still, even with this great copy, below the current VCP average price of $16,600. You don't see too many Mickey Mantle cards in this high grade example. Sell for below the average price price we're talking almost two thousand dollars below the average uh, but that is a great looking 59 tops mickey mantle card number seven we have another mickey mantle the 52 bowman mickey mantle in a psa 7.5 gorgeous looking card this one sold on january 3rd for sixteen thousand one hundred dollars this was a buy it now again Below the VCP average price of $20,906. I did not look up the population of this. Sometimes half grades, there are not a lot of populations in those half grades. And so it may have been a while since that card sold. Maybe back when the card market was in its bubble phase. But nonetheless, this copy sold for almost four thousand dollars less than the vcp average price which could have been pretty much the last sale or previous sale of that 7.5 still a gorgeous card number six we have the 1951 bowman mickey mantle rookie card now for a psa 4 this has to me has great eye appeal i didn't look really close at the image uh, the corners may indicate a PSA 4. There may be some other surface crease that you may not uh, see, you know, unless you're looking at it up close. 
But to me, that is a great looking, great eye appeal PSA 4. Sold on January 5th, it was an auction, 85 bids, but again, failed to sell at or above the VCP average price of 19,853. So it sold for about $2,000 less than the VCP average. On to number five. We have the 54 tops Ernie Banks in a PSA 8. This card sold on January 19th. Buy it now, $31,900, just below the VCP average price of $33,747. Now, to me, this card is in an older PSA slab. Um, for this month, I've been showing pictures of the front and back of the card. I think it gives a little bit more insight into the eye appeal of some of these cards. Now, to me, would this card grade a PSA 8 under PSA's new standards? I have my doubts. As you can see, there is some diamond centering to that card. You can really see it more on the back. Uh, that bottom right-hand corner mm, seems a little suspect. I'm not sure, again, whether this would currently grade a PSA 8, and that may have... Um, led to the seller offering it slightly below the current average price. But overall, still a really nice looking Ernie Banks rookie card. All right, number four, we have the 52 tops Mickey Mantle in a PSA 1. You can see that uh, big crease going across uh, the front of the card there into his face takes away from uh, the overall eye appeal. Uh, this card sold on January 2nd for $32,500. It was the best offer, still slightly above the average price for a PSA 1 of $31,137. Now when we get to card number three here, it is another 52 tops Mickey Mantle. This one is an authentic altered. Now, Obviously, there is something that was uh, done to this card, but the eye appeal of this authentic card is truly amazing. And for those who do not mind that their card has been altered in some form or fashion, the eye appeal is probably what led to this card selling for $45,000 well above the current VCP average price of an authentic 52 tops Mickey Mantle of $28,200. All right, now at number two, we have another PSA 1 copy of the 52 tops Mickey Mantle. This one sold on January 28th. Again, buy it now for $47,500. And again, well above the $31,137 average price for a PSA 1. Now the question remains, if you were a buyer in this market for this card, would you rather have that PSA 1 with the crease across the face for $32,500 right around the current price? Would you be willing to spend $45,000 on an altered copy but with amazing eye appeal or even more for a true PSA 1 with maybe not as nice eye appeal, but as PSA 1 copies go for a Mickey Mantle, that is one of the nicest that I've seen show up on these top 10 lists. Not surprising that the card sold for 47500 but would love to know in the comments which copy of that 52 Mickey Mantle would you rather have for the price that those sold for. All right, on to the number one card of the 1950s. And we have the 51 Bowman Willie Mays rookie card in a really nice PSA 7. Centering for that PSA 7 is really nice. Good registry, good color. The white border there, the back, nice and clean. This card sold on January 18th. $47,600, it was an auction, 80 bids, but still didn't quite get to the current VCP average price of $51,687. All 
All right, let's take a look at the top 10 from the 1960s. At number 10, we have the 63 tops Pete Rose rookie card in a PSA 7. This one sold on January 12th for $4,135. It was an auction, 41 bids, sold for slightly above the PSA, uh, the VCP average price of $4,090. At number nine, we have the 69 Tops Super Mickey Mantle, card number 24 in a PSA 9. Sold on January 15th for $4,626. This was an auction, 28 bids. The current BCP average price, $4,484. So this sold slightly above that average. In terms of population, there are 58. PSA 9s, and 10 PSA 10s. At number 8, we have the 1960 Tops Mickey Mantle in a really nice PSA 8. This one sold on January 31st. It was an auction, three bids, but again, as some of the uh, Mantle cards from the 50s showed, this didn't quite get to the current VCP average price of $7,000. $777, sold for about $2,000 less. I'm not sure what turned buyers off from this 1960 Tops Mickey Mantle. It is a PSA 8. Maybe they were turned off uh, by the slight off-centering left to right, but someone, in my opinion, I think got a really good deal on that PSA 8. All right, card number 7 another Mickey Mantle, the 63 Tops Mickey Mantle, in a really nice PSA 8. Those bottom color borders are always tough, uh, often find them chipping, so when you get a clean color border at the bottom there, pretty well centered, uh, you could tend to maybe get a high grade for that card. This one sold on January 1st for $6,000. It was a buy it now and sold right around the VCP average price of $6,099. On to number six. We have 1963 Tops Bomber's Best featuring Tresh, Mantle, and Richardson from the New York Yankees in a PSA 9. This sold on January 3rd for $7,075.20. Interesting opening bid. It was an auction. There was one winning bidder. Now, if you look at the VCP average price, it's $7,075. But the last PSA 9 sold for $7,075.20, but not the January 3rd sale. This one was from May of 2022 on Memory Lane's auction. Now, the PSA 9 population is 17. There are no PSA 10s. I looked at the card from Memory Lane and it is a different copy than this one here. Not sure if the seller of this card took a look at the Memory Lane sale from May of 2022, took a look at the winning price and decided to start the auction off at that price, and there just happened to be one bidder. So we had two back-to-back -back cards of this PSA 9 sell for exactly $7,075.20. Number five, we have the first appearance of the 68 Tops Nolan Ryan rookie card. This copy sold on January 17th for $7,999.95, <laughs> a buy it now, a little bit higher than the VCP average price of $7,600. Looking at the back, fairly well centered. And the reason why I point that out is card number four is another PSA 8 copy of the Ryan Rookie. Now the front of this card to me looks a little bit off left to right compared to the card number five on the list. And the back as well looks, has a diamond centering, off centering on the back. To me, I appeal wise, 
Not as nice of a looking card. Sold for five cents more. Best offer, $8,000. Again, above the VCP average price of $7,600. Now let's get to card number three because it is another 68 tops Nolan Ryan rookie card in a PSA 8. This one on the front looks very well centered. The back though, just like card number four, looks to be off center, sort of a diamond centering on the back. This one was a best offer on January 11th, sold for $10,500. Now, this sale took place in between the January 6th one for 8,000 and the January 17th one for right around 8,000. Both best offer, buy it now. I'm wondering, just don't know why someone would be interested in paying $10,500 for this copy when they could have had this copy at number five for just under $8,000 that to me overall has the best centering front to back. So would like to know your thoughts on these three Nolan Ryan rookie cards. Which one of those PSA 8s would you rather have and would you be willing to pay $10,500 for this copy when you could have had the other two for around $8,000? So on to number two from the 1960s. We have the 63 Tops Willie Mays in a PSA 9. This one sold on January 24th for $12,323.12. An interesting opening bid. There was only one bidder who won it. The VCP average price, $13,008, so a little bit, around $700 less than the current average. Now, in terms of population, there are 38 PSA 9s. There is only one PSA 10 copy. All right, on to the number one card of the 1960s, and it is the 69 Tops Kari Yastrzemski All-Star. Now, this was a card that I recently acquired for my collection, although it was not in a PSA 10. It was in a PSA 6, but that is fine with me. Now, this PSA 10 copy sold on January 14th for $23,100. It was an auction, 87 bids, the current VCP average price is that $23,100 sale because there has been no, on VCP's website, there has been no reported previous sale of a PSA 10 because it is a population of two. Great looking Yaz card there from 69. All right, on to the cards from the 1970s. This is where it gets interesting. Coming in at number 10, we have the 77 Tops Dale Murphy Rookie Card. We've seen a PSA 10 Dale Murphy Rookie Card pop in here and there on the top 10 list from the 1970s. What's interesting about this sale, this one sold on January 17th. Best offer for $4,600. Now, the VCP average price is $5,072. It has a population in a PSA 10 of 62 copies, so not extremely hard to find. The last PSA 10 sold in October of last year for $3,840. The previous one, about a couple weeks before that, on October 8th, sold for $5,777. So this one sold right in between the two. So obviously this card comes up somewhat periodically, but the final sale price uh, has been going up and down. So this latest one was sort of right in the middle of the two previous sales. All right, number nine. We have the 1975 Tops Bobby Heiss, I think that's how you pronounce it, in a PSA 10. On January 19th, this sold for $4,938. 21 bids on this auction. The VCP average price is the $4,938 sale price because the last 10 sold, believe it or not, for $282 back in November of 2021. 
and the sale before that wasn't was all the way back in 2020, December of 2020, for $449. This PSA 10 copy, there's only two out there. So when this came up for auction, uh, obviously that garnered probably more attention than the previous sales. And this is most likely a PSA registry by someone looking to build their 1975 tops set. All right, on to number eight. The 1979 tops Bob Stanley in a PSA 10. This is the only PSA 10 in existence. This was reportedly sold January 26 for $5,000, a best offer. The reason why I say reportedly sold is this has not hit um, the um, VCP database yet because sometimes with these best offers or buy it nows, uh, there's about a 30 day delay in getting the data pulled into VCP's database. So according to VCP, there was no previously reported sale of this PSA 10 copy. It is a somewhat older slab, so I'm not sure if someone had that graded and just kept it, um, but there is no reported auction sale for that PSA 10 copy of Bob Stanley. Number seven, we have another 75 tops card. This is Tim Johnson in a PSA 10, sold January 19th. Again, these cards from the 1970s, um, the majority of these cards seem to have sold, be sold by two different sellers. And I'm not sure if they were set breaks, PSA registry, set breaks, uh, but a bunch of these PSA 10s from the 70s um, hit the market in January from two uh, primary sellers. This one sold on January 19th for $5,655 in an auction. 12 bids, again, the VCP average price, $5,655. This sale because the previous PSA 10 sold for $514.68 back in November of 2021. Prior to that, the previous PSA 10 copy sold for $382 all the way back in 2015. There are only two PSA 10 copies of this Hard. So, not sure which one sold on which date, but uh, those two copies I think have been floating around. But a big increase there, a tenfold increase from just less than two years ago. Number six on the list, we have another 75 tops. Again, this seller I think had a bunch of 75 tops in PSA 10 for sale. This is Boog Powell's. PSA 10 copy sold again January 19th an auction 17 bids for an interesting sale price same as that previous card $5,655 fewer bidders this time as the Tim Johnson or actually more bidders than the Tim Johnson but sold for the exact same price now for whatever reason VCP did not have this sale in their database so they're showing the average price of this PSA 10 copy at $698 because the last one their database had was sold in May of last year. And before that, you have to go all the way back to 2015 for a sale of a PSA 10 copy for $349. There are only three PSA 10 copies of that 1975 tops Boog Powell. All right, halfway there, number five, another 75 tops card, another Johnson. This is Bart Johnson, his PSA 10 copy. This is the only PSA 10 copy of the 1975 tops Bart Johnson card. Again, sold on January 19th, an auction, 15 bidders, sold for a little bit more, $5,756. It'd be interesting to know whether all three of those 75 tops cards were purchased by the same buyer. Again, maybe working on their own 75 tops registry set. And of course, the VCP average price was that $5,756 sale. The previous PSA 10 
sold for $414.87 back in October of 2021, and no previous sale for that one PSA 10 is in the VCP database. All right, number four, we have the 79 Tops Dale Murphy in a PSA 10, sold on January 29th for $7,500. Best offer, this again, because of the best offer and the date sold has not hit the VCP database. So according to them, the average price for a PSA 10 is $895 because that one was the last one sold in November of 2017. And before that, the previous sale was $599.99 in March of 2016. There are nine PSA 10 copies of the 79 Tops Dale Murphy. All right, on to card number three. The 79 Tops Robin Yount in a PSA 10. Sold on January 15th. It was a buy it now for $8,999.99. The VCP average is $8,428. The last 10 sold for $78,55.59 in May of 2022. Prior to that, it was $1,100 in July of 2019. Now, Taking a look at this card, especially the back of this card, I personally have a little bit of a issue with it being a PSA 10. It is an older slab. And again, maybe technically based on PSA's criteria of the backs of the card, I know they have a little bit more give in terms of the centering. But honestly, to me, if you're going to have a card in a PSA 10, it should be a lot better centered than this copy here. To me, when you're looking at the total card, the front and the back, I personally don't see how this could grade a PSA 10. Would love to know your thoughts on whether you think this is a PSA 10 copy or not, but sold for nearly $9,000. So someone definitely thought it was well worth it, even given the miscut or not miscut miss centering on the back of the card all right card number two from the 1970s we have the 1979 tops nolan ryan in a psa 10 sold on january 5th for ten thousand dollars best offer below the vcp average price of twelve twelve thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars because that was the last sale reported back in may of 2022 prior to that in 2020 a PSA 10 copy sold for $5,450. There are 13 PSA 10s. And again, just like the Robin Yount, I personally have an issue. Again, this is an older PSA slab. That centering on the back, to me, just doesn't qualify it as a PSA 10. But maybe from a technical standpoint, it does. Again, someone's willing, someone was willing to pay $10,000 for this PSA 10 from the front, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So there you go. Now on to card number one from the 1970s. And it is the 79 Tops Dave Winfield. Now I know this Dave Winfield card, very similar to the Ozzy Smith, really hard to find centered. In fact, this is the only PSA 10 copy to be graded now again this is an older slab but look at the centering on the back now to me this is a psa 10 dave winfield card that looks absolutely great you still get that slight diamond centering that you get on many 79s i still think that this qualifies for that psa 10 in my opinion this one sold on january 8th for 20 thousand dollars there are no previously recorded sales on vcp for this pop one psa 10 1979 tops dave winfield well there you have it the top 10 psa vintage baseball card sales on ebay for the month of january 2023 would love to know your thoughts on some of the cards that showed up on these top 10 lists, specifically from the 50s, 
those 52 tops Mickey Mantles. Which one of those three would you rather have in your collection for that price? From the 1960s, the 1968 tops Nolan Ryan rookie cards. Which of those three would you be willing to purchase for the price that they sold for? And finally, from the 1970s, what did you think of all those PSA 10 copies, specifically some of those that were really off center on the back? Do you think they deserved the PSA 10 grade? Well, that's all I have for you. So until next time, thanks for watching.